Oh my gosh. You're such a fucking weirdo. Hello there. Are you a weird girl too? Excellent. Come on in. This video is for you. <clears throat> okay, so before we get into this video, we're going to start, as we always do, with what book I'm currently reading and what game I'm currently playing. So I just finished reading the Captive Prince trilogy, which I was reading as part of research for a future video, and it was not what I was expecting after all of the negativity I've seen surrounding it and people warning off it and saying that it was like a cancelled book. I really enjoyed it, but we will get into that in the future. And as it is October, I'm currently replaying Until Dawn, and this time I am really determined to keep Ashley alive. I would be very happy this time. I would feel like I had achieved something new and great and spectacular. So it's our time, guys. Weird girls are cool right now. And I mean, they were always cool, but now the general public seems to be catching on. Seems like we might finally be approaching a time in which you can truly be cringing free. So today I want to talk about the weird girl renaissance. Why do we suddenly love them? And what does this mean for the weird girls in your life? Okay, so let me ask you, dear viewer, have you ever been on TikTok and you've stumbled across one of those videos of a group of conventionally attractive people lining up to uh, play the occasionally funny try not to cringe challenge, but then, plot twist guys, uh, all they do is just like make fun of autistic people. Ha <laughs> so funny. Do you like to cosplay? Because I Overload. To cosplay. <laughs> Wrong. I hate you. Well, you have to be nice to me. I'm just a I hate you. One of those videos of people like Junko posing or cosplay posing or doing a bit where they're like the weird kid in your class but the whole thing is framed around the idea that like oh my god these people are so weird and I would never actually do that because I'm not a little freak. <laughs> like oh my god that would be so weird like only weirdos do that. Bra moment. Bruh. Hungry. Fighting. Do these videos also fill you with unbridled rage? Honestly, to me, this is some of the lowest form of comedy on the internet. It's down there with those fabricated prank videos and pick me up parodies. Okay, listen, I do get it. I am not going to piss on anyone who has ever found those videos funny. Weird people are weird. It's kind of a given. And sometimes guys, all you can do is laugh. I have been a weird girl. I am a weird girl and I have also frozen up in front of other weird people because I am filled with a sense of, oh my God, don't you realize you're gonna be made into a social pariah if you behave like this? Like, I cannot save you. Any cringe I ever feel comes from my own insecurities. It's like, queen, you dropped your mask. It's solidarity cringe. But now guys, something interesting seems to be happening on TikTok. Where once there was backlash to cringe, there is now backlash to the backlash to cringe because People are embracing weirdness. Be else. We're seeing this twofold. The first way is the literal backlash. So we're getting videos where people are pointing out how these, and I say this with so much salt in my mouth, comedians who do these skits where they pretend to be like the weird kid at school are often in bad faith. And it's strange to build an entire TikTok career out of making a joke from someone who often doesn't even know that they're the butt of the joke. In my ear drum, dum, dum. Music boyfriend, I'm your yum, yum. The humor, the way people laugh at it together is very reminiscent of the actual weird kid experience of not realizing that you're being made fun of. You think you're part of the fun. You think they're laughing with you. It's the classic Regina George Mean Girls phrase where she's like, oh my God, I love her. She's like a Martian or something. And it's not until you look back that you might even realize that you are being made fun of. Just weird kid trauma. I've even seen people try and defend this type of comedy where they look for a moral reason why it's correct and right to make fun of these people. As if them being cringe is somehow a moral issue. People will say like, oh, this is the new Eddie Munson on videos of fandoms, basically just behaving like fandoms. Here's three signs that you're a real Eddie Munson stan. Number one, you don't want Chrissy to wake up because you don't like this, Chrissy, wake up! But I mean, I would argue what was even wrong with the OG Eddie Munson fans anyway? Like, what did they actually do that was so evil other than making people embarrassed? <laughs> to cringe does not mean an act of evil has been committed. Might I suggest, everyone, that if you come across something on the internet that is harmless, 
but you don't like it, you can just scroll away. Like you can just go, whoop, it's so easy. It's so easy, I'm begging you. More often than not now on these cringe compilation videos or videos of people making fun of fandoms or weird people they found online, it's very easy to find tons of comments of people actually defending them, pointing out that the behavior is actually harmless. When I feel like all you'd see before was just people jumping on the dog pile. And the second part of this love for weird girls comes from, of course, the current publicity around the weird girl in pop culture. Angels have For the past few years, we've basically had a weird girl of the year. So two years ago, it was Wednesday Adams. The year before that, we had Serial Experiments Lane. This year, the fad seems to be cresting with TikTok's current love for the film Dinner in America and the current it girl, weird girl, Patty. I'm looking for my purpose. Kevin, shut the F up! <laughs> People are making aesthetic compilations of weird girls in media to the song Watermelon from the film. I'm seeing like, which weird girl are you based on your birth month? I'm seeing outfits inspired by, you know, all the classic stuff when something becomes popular. Now, the weird girl is not to be confused with the manic pixie dream girl. I feel like we need to make this very clear. An integral part of the weird girl is that her story exists separately to a male protagonist. A manic pixie dream girl will usually be the love interest in a story which mainly focuses a male character. This is why I would personally not include the OG Ramona Flowers or basically any of Zoe Deschanel's film characters. She was definitely filling a very specific role at a very specific time in film history. Yeah, um, <laughs> I'll see you tomorrow. Okay guys, so to name a few of the current weird girls currently being deified, we have got, <clears throat> of course, Patty from Dinner in America, Juno from Juno, Emily, Missy from Big Mouth, Daria and Jane, Tracy from Chewing Gum, Wednesday Adams, Marin from Bones and All, Tina and Louise Belcher, Lisa Frankenstein, and a personal favorite of mine, Hazel from Bottoms. It's just very funny to me how we can have on one side of the coin people admiring and adopting the aesthetics of weird girls in media, while on the other side of the coin you have unenlightened people commenting is it acoustic on videos of people doing cringy but ultimately harmless stuff in fandoms. It's just crazy how those two things can exist together at the same time. Bimo, I love you, but you don't understand comedy. Maybe it's just not funny. And this brings up the trend concern. If weird girl becomes a fashionable trend, then will all of the girls who were already the weird girl in their lives get a cringe double down when the fad fades? Okay, like for example, as somebody who's been a longtime fan of the word demure, it's been an integral part of my lexicon for a very long time. I feel like I've had it ripped from my hands. I can't say it anymore because the assumption is, of course, that I'm just doing it for the outdated trend. I am not demure. I am not mindful or considerate. I'm a goblin. Goblin that ass. With weird girl becoming popular, is this to be her fate too? This is always the worry with creating trends out of counterculture. And it is of course why people who are in counterculture movements don't really like their stuff becoming trends. <laughs> There's nothing wrong with it. It's even nice to see unusual fashions become more popular. The issue is how newbies might start to police it and misunderstand it. And you know, treat it like a passing trend and assume everyone doing it is just jumping on the trend. Like a tongue -tongue. We're even seeing this right now with the trinket bag of all things. Which funnily enough is something of an offshoot of weird girl fashion anyways. Sailor Mochi X on TikTok did a great video talking about some of the issues with this becoming a trend. She explained some of the very early origins of this trend and how kawaii items like blind boxes and keychains and bows are fashionable add-ons to these bags. She points out that just because something is new to you, it doesn't mean it's new to everybody. And that trinket bags have been popular for a long time in other spaces. Eater bags, for example, with anime fans. I myself was and still am a 
champion of the eater bag, I had one dedicated to Disney and specific Disney characters that I would take with me to the parks. I currently have a frog one, which I'm filling with fizzeroli items from Hell of a Boss because he's fizzy frog. I feel like you get it. But now there's this backlash to it that it's bad to go out and just buy loads of random trinkets to stick on your bag for a trend when you're probably just going to throw them away, or that it's ugly and just a bad fad, or that it's already becoming unfashionable. When actually, it's simply a part of a lot of people's fashion culture already. And those that have been a part of communities with trinket bags usually have a curated and deeply personal collection that they have accrued over a long period of time. The funny thing about the weird girl renaissance is that so many weird girls in pop culture are part of counterculture fashion movements that then become popular when they reach the general public. But this time, instead of focusing on just one aspect of the fashion, we've zoomed out to the whole weird girl in general. So why do we all suddenly love weird girls? Or at least why are we now being more vocal about it? Like a tongue tongue. I think it's not surprising that this movement is going hand in hand with a new wave of feminism that focuses on a total departure from men. Examples like the 4B movement or its similar adoptions in the West. And all of this also feels in direct backlash to the trad wife movement. Baby, I'm your Baby, I'm your the weird girl is in many ways the antithesis to the trad wife. She's awkward, she struggles to perform femininity, she finds it difficult to perform these regular aspects of being a girl. Things I, as a weird girl, can sorely relate to. Oh, I thought you were the kind of girl who knew when to say when. I don't really know what kind of girl I am. There's also a lot of women currently getting late diagnosis for autism. We're seeing these large scale experiences of cathartic moments of forgiveness and understanding towards their difficult childhoods and their inabilities to fit in. These weird girl characters are often extremely comforting to girls who found it difficult to fit in at school, whether diagnosed neurodivergent or not. With this embracing of personal weirdness, it's almost like we're seeing a collective mask dropping. The weird girls are no longer shying away from being weird. I know who I am. A loser. Okay, I watch anime, I stay inside all day, I read fan fiction, and I know what the Omega verse is. I know exactly who I am. Just because you don't know who I am, that's not my problem. I know I'm a bad bitch, but I'm also fucking weird. And I've accepted that. I just need you two. These are my hobbies, bitch. Wait, they don't love you like I love you. Wait. And even for the not weird girls, we understand that the rigid expectations of femininity are exhausting and sometimes it's nice to embrace the weird. Okay guys, I'm gonna trauma dump a little bit for you so that we can all hold hands and share the experience together. As a child, I learned the hard way that I needed to behave in certain ways to be palatable to other people. This is obviously not exactly new, everyone experiences this to some degree. And I think Charlie XCX said it best when she said, girl, so confusing. We get it, like being a girl is difficult. For some people, it is extremely difficult. You need to read certain magazines and dress a certain way and shave your legs. Some people find this stuff easier to do than others. For me, it was a performance that I had to study religiously to get the role right. I was also terrified of people finding out that I was a fraud. And I was told once by a friend of me that I was terrible at being a girl. And you know what? she was right. I eventually cracked the code like many people did and realized that as long as I was conventionally attractive and dressed a certain way, then my weirdness would be seen as cute and quirky instead of something to be shunned. This is the sad reality of things. It is a thing we cannot escape unless you are extremely brave. And it's only since this weird girl renaissance that I've really admitted how much of myself I've stifled and changed to fit in and be perceived as normal. How many of my hobbies would I still be doing? What kind of content would I still be making if I'd never had this worry of trying to appear more agreeable? The truth is I have a pretty severe anxiety disorder which manifests in some utterly bizarre and very annoying ways. All just from the sheer effort it takes to interact with people socially and just exist in the world. And I know there are many, many people not just weird girls who also experience the world like this, who actually find existing a deeply anxiety inducing and <laughs> exhausting experience. I see you, it's real, it's very much like the girls who get it, get it situation. Even filming these videos is very difficult for me. I have to practice what I'm saying a lot. I have to say it many, many times to make sure it sounds normal. I often break out in hives when I'm filming, so I have to wear things to like cover my neck. Um, I have like hearing issues from the anxiety that makes my ear like flutter and not be able to hear properly um and i break out in rashes literally all over my body just like get a grip 
Hello, Bahrain. We are not being hunted for sport. Anyway, just felt like this was the appropriate video to open up a bit about that. So you, uh, if you're also suffering with it, we can suffer together. So I want to leave one final message for the weirdos in this video. Recently, I saw an amazing video by Amelia Fart where she addresses the void to discuss how recently, whenever she leaves the house, she is mocked or sneered at. She rightly points out that if someone doesn't like the way she looks, there are a million other things they can look at. They can simply look away instead of being mad about how she chooses to dress herself. But the crux of her video was a plea to the weirdos to keep being weird, to never let your shine be dulled by this behavior from other people. That it is your civic duty not to let this kind of mocking behavior from the unenlightened stop you from being you. I think it's a really beautiful and really important message and I'm actually going to link the video below. But I also think it's important to remember, we are in a precious moment of weird girl love. We're seeing a long awaited amnesty towards harmless cringe behavior. And I want you all to know that even if this fad fades, even if weird goes out of fashion again, that you, you little oddballs, were fine, are fine and will be totally fine just the way you are. You've just got to find your weird community. You're like a bunch of weirdos to hang out with or something. Like, I don't know. You just got to do what I did and find a bunch of other weirdos to hang out with. Anyway, as usual, I love you all so much and I will see you all real soon. Bye. Don't be so weird.